Thank you, Emma. Uh, I'd like to talk today about the state of the HERS industry. What I'm going to look into is what has the industry in ResNet accomplished in 2020, and what does it look like for our future? When I think of 2020, it's been quite a year, hasn't it? When I think of 2020, I think of the uh, first line of Charles Dickens' novel, A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. In terms of the worst of times, we all know what we have. We have a pandemic that's out of control, that's cost the lives over 340, 100,000 Americans, and also a downfall of the economy. But let's look at the best of times. The best of times is that HERS demand increased by 24% in 2020 over 2019. Also, ResNet adopted emergency measures that allowed the rating industry to remain safe while meeting the demand for HERS ratings during the COVID-19 pandemic. So what are the notable accomplishments was reached by ResNet in the HERS industry? I'm gonna be addressing these specifically, but I see the four main ones being the HERS rating activity, energy code compliance and HERS raters, adoption of the ANSI ResNet ACCA ICC standard 310, and the launching of our water efficiency rating program, the HERS H2O. So let's look at the HERS activity. As I mentioned before, it was a record year for us. We have a 24% increase over 2019, and 2019 was a record year in terms of the number of homes HERS rated. We had, in, in 2020, there were over 299,000 homes HERS rated. Through these number of homes, we've now reached a threshold of over 3 million homes. And the average HERS index score of those 299,000 homes was a 58. What does that mean? Well, the average home HERS index score of a home was 42% more efficient than a home is built as recently as 2006 and 72% more efficient than a home built in the 1970s. But let's look at more than these numbers. Let's look at what it really affects that this is happening. Let's first look at the families who bought and are living in these homes. It is calculated that these homeowners are gonna be saving $223 million a year in annual savings. This is money that's gonna go into pocketbooks and to the local economy in these trying economic times. This is clearly a win for all. But also it's good for the environment. It is calculated that the, these homes will be netting a savings of over 1.3 million tons of carbon each year. This is akin to taking over 284,000 automobiles off the road for a year. So let's look at uh, what the scores were. As I mentioned before, the total average HERS index score was 58. The average HERS index score without solar was 59. The average HERS index score of homes with solar was 28. And I think this number is significant because there's this uh, belies the urban myth that builders, if they have solar, are going to put solar on and not put insulation in the house or air tightness. What this shows is the opposite. These builders, at least among the homes that are HERS rated, are building very energy efficient homes. And what they're doing is using solar to boost their performance, not the other way around. So let's look at the builders in terms of who achieved the, highest, low, the lowest HERS index scores. The builder with the lowest average HERS score in the United States in 2020 was Thrive Home Builders of Denver, Colorado, whose their average home score was 26. And then the builder with the lowest HERS index score was the Phil King Design Group of Winter Park, Florida, who had an astounding 90, minus 97 on the HERS index for a home they purchased, minus 97. That's almost 100 times more, the home consumed almost 100 times more power and energy than it consumed. Also, let's now look at where the distribution of, uh, of ratings took place among the housing tops. Roughly 76% of all homes HERS rated in 2020 were single family homes, and that's not really surprising. Multifamily represented 20%, and duplex and triplexes is 4%. I think the number of the multifamily is the base amount, because in 2020, all these homes were low-rise multifamily buildings. Now, with the new ANSI standard, it's going to allow us to do HERS ratings on high and mid-level uh, multifamily buildings. We're going to see this number increase over the next few years. 
So let's look into the idea of the, the opportunity of HERS Raiders Energy Code compliance. ResNet and International Code Council, ICC, worked together and collaborated coming up with a new certification, the new ICC HERS IECC compliance specialist for HERS Raiders. This is for HERS Raiders who have, who have passed the ICC Energy Codes test. And what the purpose of it is, is to give recognition of HERS Raiders to undertake code compliance and have the building code officials trust their expertise because they'll have a certification from the same ICC certification that they do have. One of the great, I think, exciting things that took place in 2020 outside of the number of ratings was the adoption of the ANSI ResNet ACCA ICC Standard 310. This new standard was developed in collaboration with the American, with the Air Conditioning Contractors of America, the International Code Council, and EPA. And what this will do is we will credit the rating of a, the proper installation of an HVAC system and a HERS rating. This is gonna be significant, particularly for those builders who are looking to reduce their scores. It's been calculated that properly installing the HVAC system and rating it will net a, 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 a redu reduction, depending upon climate zone, of around six points. Now let's move from what took place in 2020 and look forward to what, I, what the future looks like. How are we gonna get into that great wide open? And here's where I identify the emerging opportunities for HERS raters. We've already talked about code compliance, but I'll go into more. Water, rating water efficiency, mortgage financing, and then the policy initials of the new Biden and Harris administration. Let's look at energy code compliance first. ResNet has been working with the ICC in a collaboration to make HERS raters the go-to choice for code officials for demonstrating compliance to the energy code. Looking at it, we've calculated that this has potential to double the demand for HERS rating services to be able to do this code compliance. In terms of water efficiency, this will give a tool that HERS raters can bundle their traditional HERS rating with a HERS H2O rating. This is presents raters with the opportunity to present to their builder clients to monetize the water performance of their homes in the same fashion that the HERS index monetizes the energy performance of the home. Let's look at mortgage loans. ResNet has proposed a policy on considering energy efficiency into the mortgage loan. We published in December a, a white paper on introducing rationality in the home financing process. What we're advocating to the administration is that the mortgage industry consider the energy efficiency of a home for purposes of calculating the mortgage qualification and home valuation. Currently, home affordability is determined by principal, interest, taxes, insurance, PITI. It doesn't consider the energy cost. Matter of fact, energy costs are higher than either insurance or taxes. So what we're proposing is taking that traditional PITI, but subtracting the monthly energy savings documented in a HERS rating. So the new formula would be PITI minus ES. We have a new administration and new Congress, and the Biden-Harris administration in this campaign in 2020 set up a notable ambitious goal uh, that included buildings. This is the first time on a national level buildings was played as a significant factor of a climate change proposal. And the goal of the plan for the buildings, this is the quote from the plan, to cutting the carbon footprint of our national building stock in half by 2036. This is an ambitious endeavor. It would take complete cooperation and endeavor by both government and the private sector. I think builders and raiders have the great opportunity to be involved into this meeting of this ambitious goal. And then finally, I want to invite you to our next, the 2022 conference that will take place in Austin, Texas. One sad thing about this year's conference is I truly miss the interaction, the networking, the social events that ResNet conferences are known for. But this pandemic will end. And in 2022, we're gonna be in Austin. So please mark your calendars and join us in Austin on February 21st and 23rd. Thank you.